Welcome everyone to HPAC Tech. Today, I'm going to show you the six-step six sequence operation of a 80 and 90% furnace, and also I'm going to show you each component and what do they do and how do they work into the system. And also, I'm going to show you how to connect them all into the IFC or the computer. All right? You guys ready? So here we go. So first, we're going to be talking about the electric components on the 80 and 90 percent furnaces. First, we're talking about the safety switch right here. This is a, uh, a surface switch which is going to um, is going to get 120 volts coming in and 120 volts coming out. And the reason why we have this uh, surface switch is to shut the power off into the furnace whenever the technician wants to fix the furnace. Okay. The next part is the uh, door switch. A door switch is in the furnace and is um, located by the blower compartment. If the blower door falls down for any reason, this switch will open and then it's going to shut up the 120 volts into the IFC and also into the transformer. So the furnace pretty much shuts it off. It's a safety device. Later we're going to explain why, why would this happen. Why do you need to shut up the furnace if the blower door falls down? Okay. The next component is the induced motor. The induced motor, it, um, it creates negative pressure in the secondary heat exchanger and the primary heat exchanger on the 90 percenter. And also, it pulls the combustion out of the heat exchanger. It's a very important part of the furnace. Okay. That's the induced motor. The next part is the transformer. The transformer. It, it takes 120 volts and it reduces down to 24 volts. Okay, you must have 24 volts in order for the computer or the IFC to in order to work. If there's no 24 volts, the IFC will never turn on. Okay, um, that's a transformer. The next part is the igniter. The igniter, it is a, it's a part that um, it, it ignites the main burners. It turns on the main burners. So this igniter needs to get really, really hot, okay? Um, it gets about, um, you know, three times as hotter as a regular pilot, okay? Um, very important part, and this is the hot surface igniter. The next part is the gas valve. The gas valve, it, uh, it opens the gas into the main burners, and this is, going, this is how you're gonna get the main burners to turn on, okay? So that's the gas valve. The flame sensor, it senses the flame. It uses a special signal, which is called the microamps, and um, the range is between two to three microamps, you know, and um, very, very important. This tells the computer that, that the flame is present, so this is the flame sensor. The next part is the coil contactor. The coil contactor, you're gonna find it outside in the condensing unit. I put in the picture so you guys can see how can, you can wire it, right? But this piece normally is outside by the condenser. And this turns on the air conditioning when you call for air conditioning. Okay? The next piece is the thermostat. The thermostat pretty much controls or maintains the temperature in your house. Okay? Um, either it's going to be heating or cooling or fan on. Uh, depends what the customer wants. Okay? That's the thermostat. The next piece, uh, there's actually two of them. This is the roll-out switches. The roll-out switches. It's protecting um, the area around the burners. So if you have a flame rollout, and this uh, rollout switch is to get hot, and they will pop open. And when they open the, 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 the contacts, it, it removes 24 volts going back into the IFC. So that means the gas valve, it doesn't get any more voltage, so then the system shuts off. So this is the safety. Um, that's the rollout switches. And then we got the lid switch. The limit switch, the, uh, some people call it main limit switch, and this switch uh, it is uh, taking the temperature of the heat exchange. If in case the heat exchange gets uh, really hot because you get a, a dirty uh, filter or a bad blower motor, the temperature goes too, too high, you know, between 180, maybe sometimes 200 degrees, and then this contact open and kills 24 volts for the bore, and then the bore will not send 24 volts to the gas valve. So then, you know, that's a safety device, okay? So this is a limit switch. The pressure switch, 
is connected with the special plastic tube into the inducer motor. As the inducer motor turns on, it, uh, it creates a negative pressure into the pressure switch. The pressure switch closes, and then as it closes, the switch, it sends 24 volts back into the IFC, and then the IFC then, it goes into the next step, okay? So pretty much the pressure switch tells the computer that the inducer motor's on, so it's okay, let's move to the next step, okay? And I'm gonna talk about what, you know, sequence operation we're talking about, right? The blower motor right here, this is gonna have either three or four speeds. We're only gonna be using two, two speeds and one at a time. Either you call for, for air conditioning, which is normally high speed, or you're gonna call for heating, which is normally either medium or low speed. But today, we're just gonna say low speed, okay? Low speed heating, high speed air conditioning, all right? So there you go, guys. This is all the uh, electrical components for, from an 80 and 90% furnace. All right, now let's connect all these components into the, into the IFC, okay? Here we go. So we're gonna start with the color, black color, and we're gonna bring 120 volts from the electrical panel into the service switch. From the service switch, it comes out and it's gonna go into the door switch. From the door switch, 120 volts comes out. You know what, let's erase this wire. <clears throat> there you go. From the door switch comes out and it goes into the IFC. Where into the IFC is supposed to say line one. Um, every time that I take the pen off, you're going to see this little sign over there, I cannot take it off. But it actually goes into line one, okay? That's my 120 volts coming in, right? Now, we need to send also neutral. The board needs neutral. And, and just to let you know, the neutral is to send the neutral to all the components. The board will not actually need the neutral, okay? Uh, uh, the board is kind of like a, a, a pigtail. It, it spreads out the voltage into any other components that it needs neutral. For example, the inducer motor needs neutral, the igniter needs neutral. This is some of the examples, right? But uh, basically the IFC, it only needs 24 volts in order to be alive, okay? Here we go, so we need to change the color to a yellow one. I like yellow for neutral. And I'm gonna grab this neutral and send it up all the way into the neutral area. You know what? Let's change that wire. Let's do it again. Oops. There you go, guys. Neutral all the way into the neutral. Every IFC, every IFC should have an area where all the neutral is going to be connected. The neutral coming from the electrical panel and all the neutrals, whatever component needs neutral, right? So that's this area right here. This is the neutral area. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna put a yellow area here. This is all your neutral compartments, okay? All right, now let's move into the next component, which is gonna be a transformer. We're gonna change into the black wire, right? The transformer needs 120 volts on the primary side, right? So we're gonna get it next to the line one it's gonna say XFMR, and that is, this black wire is gonna go back into the transformer, right there, into the black wire. Now, you guys know that um, the transformer also is gonna be neutral. Uh, I'm not gonna send any more neutral because this, if I do an all this wire, it's just gonna look very, really bad. So I prefer to keep it as clean as possible. You guys already know that if you send 120 volts line, you're gonna need neutral, right? All right, the 24 volts side or the secondary side transformer, it needs to go into the IFC. So we're gonna choose a red wire going from the blue down into what is called TH, oops. That was kinda of not good. Blue wire into the red down into the IFC and it says right here TH okay now how do I know this is the connections the 
The nice thing about, this is something really nice from White Rogers. Uh, the White Rogers circuit boards, uh, they give you all this information, and by the way, they do put a plastic cover, so this is nice. And also they give you all this information, what it means each of the connections right on the nine to 12 pin connector. So this is, this is nice because then you can take a look, oh, okay, so this pin right here, this is for the TH. So that's for my 24 volts. And this pin right there, this is my TR. So this is, this is what I'm following to get all these connections on the nine or 12 pin connector, okay? And this is nice from this company, right, White Riders. Um, other companies, you're normally going to have just the IFC, but it doesn't have any information on top of it, right? You got to look at in, the, in their paperwork, but you're always going to find all this, right? So let me put this back here. Okay, so now we put the, the red, the 24 volts into the 9 pin or 12 connector. Now let's change the color and use green and connect the common. So let's do this for the common. You, it says you have to send the comment into the IFC board, which this is what I'm doing, and it's going to go what it says TR right there. That's my 24 volts into the IFC. Cool. Now the next component is going to be my inducer draft motor. Let's change the color to a black wire. Okay. So right here it says I and D, so that means inducer draft motor. So this is going to be this connection. So we're going to grab one wire right here and coming up, go down into the inducer draft motor. And that's, we're just going to lay it right there. So this is where it's going to get 120 volts inducer motor once it, you know, start the, you know, once it gets 120 when you call for heat. Okay. Uh, now let's go with the igniter. The igniter, it actually gets the voltage in the same plug in this area. It says right here I I G N so ignition so that's where we're going to get 120 volts from this connection into the kind that's going to be another wire and set it down to the net. there you go that's where it's going to get 120 volts now you're probably going to ask okay Paulo what's up with all, all other two there's two more connections in there those are the neutrals so the inducer and the igniter, they get a specially uh, dedicated neutral into a special spot. So make sure you follow that instructions, okay? Make sure you don't put that neutral into that neutral bar. No, no, no. Go into the plug, right? So that's those two spots right there. That's going to be one neutral for the igniter and one neutral for the inducer motor. Cool? All right. Now let's go into the gas valve. That's the, our next component. Uh, the gas valve, it, it needs 24 volts in order to open, right? Those 24 volts is coming from the 9 to open connector. Let's change the color to the red one. And let's take a look. And the board says uh, MB, MB. So one of those connections, this one or that one, is going to be our 24 volts. Right now, let's just choose this one here. And come up with the wire. And send it to the gas valve. Now you know that uh, the gas valve needs. Um, oh, as a matter of fact, this is this is wrong, guys. We shouldn't be coming out from that. That's just the uh, information. We should be coming out of the nine to twelve pin connector. There you go. Now I fix this. There you go. Right. Okay. So what I'm saying is that when you send twenty four volts to the gas valve, you know you need come. You need to have to come. Right now, we're just doing everything with, you know, with the high voltage or with high. Um, I can grab the other MB and send it over there, but since I want to make this as clean as possible, I'm just going to just send the main wire, okay? Now, flame sensor. That is the next flame sensor here. So let's take a look at the board, position the board, and the flame sensor is supposed to be FP. And FP is down here. So let's change the color to a purple one. There you go, and go purple right there, coming out, and send it to the flame sensor. There you go. So that's uh, the connection says FP, and that's going to be the one in the middle. Cool. Now that's my flame sensor. Now the next uh, thing is uh, the coil conductor. 
but I, I need to wire first the thermostat. So let's wire the thermostat first. And you know the colors of the thermostat. Everyone should know this. The red is R goes to the red wire of the thermostat. So I'm looking for R right there. Bring it down and go into the red wire for the thermostat, which is right there. Okay? And then we also need the green. The green for the fan on. Let's find the G, which is right here. Go down and send it down into the G. By the way, G wire is for fan on, right? And then we're also going to need the W. And I don't have, I mean, the screen is white, so uh, I cannot choose a white. Let's choose, uh, let's just choose yellow. So yellow, so W will be coming down. And you go into W and into the white wire, which is down here. And the last one, blue, which is this for air conditioning, is going to be the white connection. And that's going to be sent into the blue wire on the third step. Right? I don't want you guys to confuse because sometimes for air conditioning we use yellow or blue. Uh, this time I just use yellow as a white wire. Okay, I could have used brown, but that's fine. And um, there you go. So you got green for fan, yellow supposed to be white for, for heat. Uh, blue for air conditioning and and the red for the 24 volts, right? Now the coil conductor needs to get voltage from the from this location in order for when you call for heat I'm sorry when you call for air conditioning. So here you go. You need to send common. So uh, let's use um, a, What you may call it? a green just kind of to identify common or or let's use brown I guess. Brown common here comes out into one side of the coil contactor. So let's put it right here. I mean, it looks like it's going to the other side. I don't want you guys to think that I'm putting on the contact because this is two, uh, 220 volts right there. So I'm putting it on the other side of the coil contactor, right? Now, you also need 24 volts and that's gonna be coming from the, the white connection. So uh, let's you choose a blue wire. And somehow we're gonna have to go across everything, right? Sorry, it's gonna look weird, but all right, let's choose another blue wire. Comes out through all those wires and follow the common, and then it goes into the coil contact. So watch once again. You need common, and you need 24 volts, which is coming from the Y connection. This is the white connection, the one that's connected to the blue wire. Cool? So that's right there. That's my thermostat, and that's my air conditioning for the uh, air conditioning. Cool? All right. Now, let's move into the next. We do have two roll-out switches, and we got a limit. Okay, so here we go. Um, for the roll-out switches, it says here on the, on the computer, it says uh, RO1 and RO2. So, it seems like uh, we're gonna wire in series. So let's change the color to orange. So we're gonna be coming out of, out of R01, which is gonna be this connection. We're gonna be coming out. Let's go around this area. And we're going down into that first roll-out switch. And then from that roll-out switch, comes out and it goes into the all the roll-out switch, and this is what we call wire in series, right? And then from that roll-out switch comes out, and it goes into the connection for the roll -out. So the 24 volt comes out of the board, it goes around, it needs to come back in the board. If anything wrong with this roll-out switches, the board is going to know, and then it's going to cancel whatever step is going next to right the the high limit switch and this is what it says h uh l h l o and uh, h uh, h l i so the high limit switch i'm just going to send one wire because this is getting crazy so let me uh connect it let's change the color to um, let's do what is it 
this different color and it says that it's supposed to be coming out from here so this one here comes out and it's supposed to go out into the hand in the switch there you go it's something like that now it's supposed to be another wire coming back and let me tell you something guys this is this is not exactly how to wire this whole board every board on the furnaces they have a different type of wiring especially when they're talking about the roll-out switches and limit switches sometimes the company says you have to go into the roll-out switches and then in series with the limit switch and then you got to come back sometimes you have the, the from the from the board into the pressure switch and then into the in series with the roller switches so they do change a lot on that situation right now this is the video about where these wires are coming from okay so here we go this is just an idea that is coming from the plug and also coming from the limit right and also the pressure switch which are going to change the cover to uh, let's use something like purple and the pressure switch it gets one wire coming out and take a look and it's, it says it's supposed to go back into that corner right there and you guys can see there's other spots that is empty right so this spot let me um this area right here that connection right there you don't need to connect anything um, this is supposed to be the common of the gas valve and that's supposed to be the ground oh that's kind of important there let me show you let's change the color to green or brown and it says this this is supposed to be ground connection so let me go into that let me come out and let me use that symbol of brown so there you go so the, uh, the connection right there in the middle it says it has to be into the ground and uh, the metal the metal of the furnace that's what they're referring to okay so and then um, we only missing the this connection right here this is the one in the corner uh, let me see this one oh this is the common right so this connection right here the H H O L O it's gotta be maybe for the limit and the rollout maybe wire in series and we also missing the connection coming back from the pressure switch okay all right so once again this is not in detail how you're supposed to wire a white rogers ifc this is just to you guys can see where all these wires are coming from okay and the last thing which is going to be the blower motor the blower motor we're going to change this to a black wire and this is going to be air conditioning it's supposed to say up here cool so let's just grab a black wire coming out of the blower motor and send it to a connection that is going to say cool right there that's the one for cool and we're also going to need a red wire for the heat so another wire coming out of the blower motor oops I need a little bit of a mess but that's the best we can do and then there you go that's my my wire for heat okay so it needs neutral but you guys know the story already uh, so we're gonna have the red for low speed and the black for high speed all right so uh, there you go guys uh, this is all the components connected into the into the computer IFC and um, all right so now we're gonna be talking about the sequence of operation on this system right and um, the sequence of operation is, is only six steps right one of the first steps is uh, number one is going to be calm for heat so let's put a number one into the thermostat and why number one because we're calling for heat okay and what happens here at the thermostat uh, what happens is that r goes into w and those 24 volts goes back into the ifc as you send that voltage into the ifc it makes decisions of sending 120 volts into the inducer mode. So the step two will be the inducer mode. As the inducer motor turns on, it's gonna pull combustion or anything that is left on the heat exchanger, 
but at the same time, it's going to do a vacuum. So it's doing like a, like a negative pressure in the system, okay? As the negative pressure start happening, okay, and then we're going to move into the step three. The step three, it's all these components. On the step three, the pressure switch that is connected with the plastic hose from this connection all the way to induce motor, it's going to close the contacts when this negative pressure from inducing motor is going to start happening. By the way, this happens very fast, right? Um, so as the inducing motor runs, it creates the negative pressure, it closes the pressure switch, and that 24 volts coming into the pressure switch, it goes back into the board. And it tells the computer that the inducing motor is on, and that's okay to move into the next step. But also, on the step three, also happens that the limit switch and the roller switch they, they're normally close, so the voltage goes through those. So sometimes the voltage will go through this two or three first, and it goes to the pressure switch, or sometimes it just goes first to the pressure switch, and then it goes into the safeties. It all depends on the company who's making that program, okay? Remember, we got different companies. We got Carrier, we got uh, uh, Goodman, uh, American Standard. There's companies, they, they make their own programming, and they make a decision, either what's gonna happen in the first or second. Okay, but this happens really quick because this is normally close, right? And the computer is just waiting for this, the pressure switch to close the contents, okay? After the pressure switch closes and sends 24 volts back into the board, now we move into the step four. And the step four is the igniter. The igniter is gonna get 120 volts from where? From the IFC. The IFC makes the decision to send 120 volts. And remember, this all happens based on time and, and then sequence operation, okay? Uh, the board is just making those decisions based on the programming, based on the timing, which everything happens inside the board, okay? By the way, this board has a small microchip that it makes all those decisions, and this is all based on programming, okay? So now, the igniter gets um, 120 volts, which glows really, really hot, right? And it takes between 10 to 13 seconds for this igniter to get fully, fully hot, right? Once that time passes, the IFC makes a decision to send 24 volts into the gas valve. So that's my step number five. So my gas valve gets 24 volts for two seconds, right? Two or three seconds, the gas valve is 24 volts. And as soon as it gets that voltage, the gas valve opens, opens and releases the gas into the main burners. The igniter is on, it's, it's kind of almost turning off, right? And then as soon as that happens, you got flame. So the main burner should come on, okay? So this happens really, really fast, right? Remember, there's only two seconds that the gas valve, two to three seconds, the gas valve is gonna get 24 volts, okay? Once the burner turns on, now the next step for me, I like to call it a step, right here. Number 5.5, 5. this is what I like to call this a step. Why? Because for the technician, it's important you understand there's a flame sensor. And if that flame sensor is something wrong with it, your burner is not gonna stay on. So, flame sensor then senses the flame of the burners, which by the way, two to three seconds, senses the flame, and sense the signal, there is a microamp signal that has been sent back into the computer. That's why that's the wires connected. By the way, when the flame comes on, it touches the sensor, and this creates uh, a micro, um, microamp signal, okay? Uh, between two to three amps, right? And a DC, by the way. And this is a very, very special signal, right? So the computer sends it, and the flame sensor to the computer, the com computer takes the sense, the, the signal, and it says, okay, everything's fine. Let's move into the next step, which is the last step, and it's gonna be what? Your blower motor. So your step number six will be the blower motor, and that's when it turns on the, uh, the, uh, the, either the medium or the low speed, and it starts to blow uh, hot or warm air into the whole duct system, okay? So there you go, guys. Um, this is the sequence operation. This is all the parts and components. And there's one more thing that I was gonna talk about this too. 
how do you find out if there's something wrong with the board? Well, I, I just give you enough information to make the decision, right? And this is how it's going to happen. When you call for heat, what's your first step? Thermostat, okay? If the thermostat is bad, if that means the board's bad, no. You gotta find out why the thermostat is not calling for heat, right? Let's move to the step two. The step two is supposed to be inducer motor coming on, right? Let's say the inducer motor, everything's fine with it. It's 100% fine, but you're not, the inducer motor's not coming on, okay? But you sure you're calling for heat, right? This board, this computer board, is supposed to send 120 volts into the inducer motor. The inducer motor is not coming on. You check the voltage right here, and there's no 120. You check the resistance on the motor, the system looks good, right? So then you make a decision, all right, I can say that right now my board is bad. The relay inside the board is not sending 120 volts to my inducer, and that's a, a board that you need to replace, okay? This is how you can find it. So just remember the sequence of operation. Remember, make sure you're calling for heat. Whatever you're doing, calling for heat, calling for cooling, or calling for air conditioning. Okay? And the last thing is, how about the air conditioning follow? What happens when you call for air conditioning? Very simple. On the thermostat, customer decides to call for air conditioning. Put it to 71, right? Uh, put it to cooling, right? And the thermostat closes the circuit from R to Y, and at the same time closes the circuit from R to G, okay? So then, that information goes back into the board. The board internally has a relay, which is gonna send 120 volts to the high speed of the blower motor, okay? So the blower motor turns on high speed, and then also, right here, the 24 volts from the thermostat is sent to the blue wire, and it goes to the coil contactor. So you got 24 volts going to the coil conductor. This piece is outside. It closes this contact right here. Close that contact, close that contact, and it sends 220 volts to the air conditioning. Okay? And the air conditioning turns on. So we only need, we only need the board for just to turn on the blow motor, high speed. But everything else, it just happens outside. So most of this, most of, most of this components or the computer into the board, is for heating, most of it. The other stuff is just more simple, okay? Well guys, uh, we cover everything and um, I hope you guys like the video and I see you guys next time. Take care.